Once over one, it's Caddy with money vesting. So this is what <laughs> two in the morning looks like and feels like because uh, again, still kind of battling through with the jet lag. So I really appreciate your guys' patience and of course, kind of keeping up with uh, the low energy levels that I've had over the last couple of days just because of all the traveling and of course, the jet lag and stuff like that. So thank you so much for joining in. The markets obviously had a very, very brutal day. So we will be talking about that and I'll give you a solid I will also be going over my fair values for some of the stocks that we do cover during these market updates. So we will be talking about Tesla, Apple, Amazon, Nvidia, AMD, some of those companies. We will be going over our fair values, our intrinsic values, which have been part of our Patreon only private spreadsheet. So I'll be giving you guys a little bit more context on that as well. As always, make sure that you drop a like and of course, subscribe to the channel if you're just joining us for the first time and the link to our Discord and Patreon is also going to be down below if you want to, of course, take advantage of that. And uh, the link's going to be down below for our fundamental and technical analysis courses as well. There's a 40% discount for the brand new technical analysis course and fundamental analysis course coupon code bundle. And there's also a 16% discount for the Discord, uh, which does expire this weekend. So on Sunday, that 16% discount will go away. So if you want to be a part of our community, link down below. So let's just get right into it. Uh, stocks obviously falling off a cliff. Uh, they're down quite a bit on Friday, even though we kind of ended up closing the week on a green note. We were still down pretty substantially. I mean, the Nasdaq pretty much fell almost 4% on the day. Uh, we got the S&P dropping over 2.8% and the Dow dropping over 630 points. And this was all in the backdrop of a very strong September jobs report. So unemployment rate edged lower 3.5%. We're once again to a 50 year low. We added over 263,000 jobs. So this was still the weakest number, weakest monthly gain in jobs since April of 21. But uh, this was still a little bit, this is still stronger uh, in terms of that number and unemployment rate going down continues to kind of pave the way for the Fed to keep raising rates, even though it was a little bit shy of expectations. Uh, but nonetheless, of course, the market selling off and the 10-year yields once again pushing higher, almost approaching 4%. And uh, the S&P 500, the beginning of this week, we kind of pushed higher, but then we closed all the way back down. Thursday, Friday were brutal, but still somewhat green on the week. So nearly 60 S&P 500 names make fresh 52-week lows. So that is an insane statistic to look at. So 59 S&P 500 stocks fell to a fresh 52 week lows Friday as the broader market sold off to end a very volatile week of trading. And almost among the most notable stocks hitting fresh 52 week lows were, of course, Meta Platforms. Uh, and then we also got AMD, which cut their guidance and had a huge warning shock to pretty much start off this earnings revision cycle and also hitting its lowest point since 2012, which was Verizon. AMD hitting its lowest level since July of 2020. And rising, we're also coming down to its lowest level in almost 10 years. So, so far, half the companies that have reported third quarter results have cited adverse currency movement. So there's going to be a lot of uh, impacts to foreign exchange related impacts. Uh, other than that, we're going to be supply chain issues, inflationary pressures, cost reductions, higher wages. All that is going to start to eat into the margin slowly and steadily. And that's, you know, what's we're real, what we're really looking forward to from, from the market, from this earnings revision and, and why the earnings are going to start to come down. So Microsoft, 5% down day, pretty brutal. Apple down 3.5, Google down 2.5, Amazon down almost 5, Tesla down over 6. Chip stocks absolutely getting collapsed here. NVIDIA, uh, you know, AMD, Intel, all of them selling off. Qualcomm down anywhere between 3, 4, 5, 8%, 13% double digits, so very strongly down. So the entire market was really just selling off. It was uh, mostly just Lockheed Martin and some of the other sort of defense industrial names that were pushing higher. But other than that, it was all straight up red. Everything was a straight up down, right? This right here is going to be the entire stock market. So we are seeing a lot of red for the entire market, not just uh, not just the S&P 500, but the entire stock market pretty much selling off. Energy was somewhat okay, considering the crude oil actually broke to another recent highs of over $92 a barrel. So crude oil, once again, with that OPEC cut, pushing higher. So energy was the only outperformer on the day here with every other sector pretty much selling off over one and a half, almost 2%, 3%, 4%. Over the last one week, energy, the big, big outperformer up over 11%. And over the last one month also, energy is the only sector that's actually green. Everything else is lagging behind and underperforming. So like I said, crude oil hitting 
somewhat new highs here at $92, $93, kind of getting that breakout. Heating oil, crude oil, Brent, orange juice for the win as well. Sugar and cotton prices also pushing up with everything else, all other commodities and futures pretty much selling off on the day. Ethereum between 13 and 1400 and Bitcoin between 19 and 20,000. So this is going to be a shorter update. We're not going to spend too much time going over, you know, a lot of different things because we have already talked about it during our live streams and our several different updates. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to simply go over individual stocks, kind of highlight what my fair value is and why we need to be really patient over the course of the next three to six months where majority of that window of opportunity is going to happen, in my opinion. So starting with the markets first, again, very quick take on volatility. It was up over two and a half percent, almost three percent getting past over 31, 32 levels. So we'll keep a close eye at 35 and 40 levels to start dollar cost averaging a little bit more and then being a net buyer in the markets from a more technical standpoint. Uh, and of course, right now we're starting to kind of get back higher. So 35, 40 are the levels to watch. For Bitcoin, Ethereum, again, we're just consolidating sideways. So not a lot to add over there. Resistance still gonna stay put at 20,000. And for Ethereum, we're still gonna be watching closer to 1,400 for Ethereum as a resistance. So Talking a little bit about uh, S&P 500 and the NASDAQ. So S&P selling off, uh, of course, down over 2.8%. So 3,500 is what I'm really watching um, for next week. So next week, we've also got inflation numbers and we've also got lots of earnings coming up. So I'll be doing a, an update over the weekend, kind of preparing you guys for next week because it's going to be very important. Not only do we have earnings to look forward to from the banks. So banks pretty much usually kick us off when we're getting started with the earnings season. We've also got the most important inflation numbers coming out on October 13th, which is a Thursday. So that is going to be very, very important for the market. 3,500 is what I'm watching going into next week, all the way down to lows of 3,200. And of course, my worst case target down to 3,000 points. Those are just some levels you need to kind of memorize and remember psychological levels. 3,500, 3,200, 3,000 resistance, 3,800, 4,000, 4,200. So remember some of these numbers because they are very important for the markets moving forward, right? So again, stop predicting the bottom, but understand where the risk reward is the best, where you can find better and better deals, and what's actually which stocks, which companies are trading at undervalued levels. That's the game plan here. And talking a little bit about the NASDAQ, um, also down almost 4%. So I actually ended up closing out some of my uh, calls. So my covered calls, PayPal and Amazon covered calls, they were up over 68 to 72%. So I pretty much locked in some of the profits for them. So again, if you want to get those options alerts, figure out you know what puts and calls I'm actually selling in this environment, the link to our Discord is going to be down below because that's one way that you can actually hedge and also generate some passive income. So those are calls that I pretty much sold just a couple months ago. And as the prices are selling off, we're actually profitable because those calls are way out of the money and they're going to probably expire worthless. And as a result, we're able to lock in profits for 68, 70, 75% profit on those calls. So we pretty much did that. I, I personally closed them out for PayPal and Amazon today. Um, and we'll continue to kind of sell cover calls and cash to get puts in this environment, depending on how, obviously how the markets are trading. So again, for alerts, link's going to be down below. Uh, NASDAQ here, this is going to be that support at 10,005. So this is the most important level to watch all the way down to sub 10,000, right? So sub 10,000 is going to be that next level of support. That's kind of like this pre-pandemic high. And of course, in line with that weekly 300 symbol moving average at 9,700. So there's a big confluence there for NASDAQ as a support. Uh, right here. So 300 SMA and also in line with this previous pre-pandemic resistance. Um, another thing I want to point out is that we're getting a big re resistance here, rejection at the 200 SMA. So again, during the week, we were much higher. We were trading all the way up to 11,200, but then the sellers pretty much stepped in and brought us all the way back down to close at 10,650. So lots of sellers stepping in, pretty big wick here on the NASDAQ. So that just speaks to volume as to how strong the selling pressure really is. So starting with Apple first, and this is going to be the spreadsheet. So what I've done over here is you guys already know, you know, we have a, we have a complete spreadsheet, complete fair value spreadsheet that members can access. They can pretty much view that spreadsheet whenever they want. Uh, and again, I'm going to give you a little bit of a sprinkle here. I'm just going to go over some fair values, not going over the assumptions, but this is part of our private Patreon spreadsheets, and this will constantly be updated if the earnings also get revised. So this has not been changed for a long time, so waiting on the third quarter earnings. So this has been Apple's fair value for a very long time at about $116. So it still needs to come down 16% considering that it closed at 140. So we gotta be patient here. 116, 117, this right here is what I'm really watching for Apple. Uh, and of course, if you do see some more selling pressure, well, that's the level to really be paying attention to for Apple, considering a very conservative 
price earnings multiple and growth rate and stuff like that. So those are the assumptions that we're pricing in, margin of safety, share dilution, all that stuff. So 116, 117 is gonna be that level to watch for, for Apple. And of course, right now, we're coming down to our, our more near-term support at close to 137. Talking about Amazon, and Amazon also down about 4.7%. For Amazon, we've got our fair value sitting roughly at around $96. Again, this is straight from the spreadsheet. Members can access it. I'm presenting it to you guys uh, just on a more trial basis if you want. Uh, and this is what it really looks like, right? We have our fair values. We've, ha we've got our game plan in place. We're not greedy. We're not trying to chase the market. We're not FOMOing. We've got price targets in place, and we are just letting the prices come to us. If, if you get close, well... We can sell cash to get puts, collect premiums, uh, and generate some passive income. If you're nowhere near close to these levels, when, well, then we look at other stocks, we look at other opportunities, and we simply remain patient. That's, again, keeping things simple. We're not overcomplicated, overcomplicating stuff. And that also means that Amazon would need to drop another 16% in order to come down to our fair value at $96. So this is an area of support that we have talked about for Amazon for a very long time. This is uh, inside this green rectangle, right? So we were at these levels back in June of 22, May, June 22. So we were like at these levels before Amazon rallied 40%, uh, all the way to 144s. So we're waiting and watching low 100s, closer to $96 for Amazon at those levels. Now talking about Tesla, uh, of course, down over 6%. So Tesla is uh, you know, going to have a fair value, which is obviously much, much lower than where we are trading. Um, now, based on different assumptions, uh, Tesla's valuation has had a fair value. So we're trading some... Uh, roughly sitting somewhere between 150 to 175. Um, and this is my most conservative uh, Tesla fair value, 149. This is like the original, right? This is like the OG uh, intrinsic value. If you guys remember, if you've been following me for long enough, this was the, was the original fair value in Tesla, which obviously was made fun of a lot. And guess what? We're only 30% away. We're literally only 30% away from that level, right? So we're very, very close. And this is exactly why we take a conservative approach, guys. Like, Again, I'm not, I'm not trying to bash on any stock for any reason, but the reason why I like to go ahead with a conservative approach is exactly this reason, so that we can actually price in for those worst case scenarios and still get a good deal, right? If I were to price in the most optimistic, the best bull case scenario, well, that can be very damaging in, 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 in certain environments like, like what we're right now dealing with. But if you go with a very conservative estimate and the company actually outperforms, great. That's the cherry on top. But to begin with, I always, always go with a little bit less optimistic, less ideal, less perfect scenario so that we can actually take a more realistic approach as opposed to just trading on Hopium or pretty much figuring out fair values on Hopium. So 33% drop here on 150s for Tesla. Of course, we got a very strong support in the 200s first. So low 200s is going to be that level to watch. Um, all the way down to low 150s is what I'm really paying attention to for Tesla. Uh, as an intrinsic value. Of course, again, based on different growth rates and P multiples, you can make a case for 175 as well, but that's kind of like my original intrinsic value, sitting roughly in the 150s. Now, talking a little bit about NVIDIA, and NVIDIA here down over 8%, uh, again, thanks to AMD. Definitely, NVIDIA should be, uh, you know, padding AMD for <laughs> what it did uh, to pretty much the entire chip sector and semiconductor sector. So NVIDIA coming down to a very strong support in the 120s right now. So this right here is going to be that level to watch. And for NVIDIA, uh, my fair value obviously sitting at roughly at $95, right? So sub $100 is what I'm, where I'm sitting at. Market price at 120 So we need another 20% pullback on NVIDIA for it to come down to my fair value. I've got a strike put sitting at roughly around $100. And adjusted for the premium, I'll be sitting almost exactly at my fair value. So that's the whole point, right? We don't need to chase stocks. Let the, let the stocks come to you. Let the prices come to you. You can pretty much just sell a put and wait, right? So I've got one put waiting at $100 strike after adjusting for premium. I'll be sitting at roughly in the mid 90s for NVIDIA. Uh, and that would mean like another 20% pullback on the stock. So right now, there's a very technical support here, very, very strong technical support here for NVIDIA. So that's the level that we're really, really watching. But of course, if we do end up selling off even further, then sub 100 is what I'm really paying attention to. Now let's talk about the star of the day, the big AMD, Advanced Micro Devices. What a, what a red candle, like absolutely incredible. Down over seven and a half, almost 8%. Uh, my fair value, obviously the revised fair value, just a video that I did yesterday after considering the adjustments and the preliminary guidance cut from Advanced Micro Devices, sitting roughly in the $54 range, right? $54, $55, and it's now at 58. So we're almost like 7% away. We should come down maybe another 7% for it to start making a lot of sense. 
based on a very conservative approach on growth and earnings and uh, multiples. So what we have right now is still a pretty significant breakdown from this head and shoulders. So left shoulder, head and a right shoulder. And of course, we saw a big breakdown below the below the 200 SMA and of course below the uh, neckline as well. We pretty much went back up to get re rejected there at the 200 SMA again. And right now we're selling right back down and trading at $58. So this is going to be a very important support level kind of in line with that previous resistance but uh you know a bigger sell-off could bring us down to low 50s possibly even down to 58 dollars here uh sitting actually 52 dollars sitting at that 300 SMA. so low 50s would be a 300 simple moving average sitting roughly at that uh, 52 dollar level so that's the next support level that i'm watching for advanced micro devices talking about paypal and paypal i don't have a fair value yet but paypal is still kind of trading inside this consolidation pattern so we're still just uh you know trading here, making uh, some lower highs and lower lows. So we'll see how PayPal kind of reacts uh, to to uh, next week's inflation print, but down about 4.5%, trading at just over $90. It's done really well, actually. It's performed much better than the NASDAQ and the S&P over the recent weeks. But uh, next resistance and, and, you know, big, big level to kind of reclaim for PayPal is going to be that 200 SMA sitting at 105. So that's the level that I'm really paying attention to. And of course, support level is going to stay put at roughly sub $70. Uh, talking about square and block here still, um, consolidating sideways inside this green rectangle. So support level is going to stay put at roughly around um, low 50s, like mid 50s and low 50s. Uh, and of course, down over 7% on the day. Resistance all the way up to 89, close to $90 for square as well. Um, talking about Meta, and Meta also hitting a new 52 week low, coming down to 133. And uh, of course, we're starting to kind of breach below this support level. Uh, and next level to watch is going to be 123, 124. So this right here is going to be that next area of support to watch for Meta platforms, kind of in line with the level that we saw back in 2018, December 2018, so Q4 of 2018 because of the US-China trade wars. So that's gonna be the level to watch for Meta next, uh, at closer to 124. And of course, my fair value, intrinsic value, sitting roughly in the 150s, 160s, does represent Meta significantly undervalued, just based on the numbers right now. Fundamentally speaking, Meta's undervalued, no doubt about it. But the stock price, of course, has been super, super um, painful to watch and very, very weak from a technical standpoint. So. Uh, very much in a downtrend, lower highs and lower lows. Uh, this is kind of like a falling knife and what that looks like. So I'd be very careful. Uh, but from a fundamental standpoint, of course, it's incredibly undervalued in my opinion. So we'll keep a close eye on this. Some of these levels, 133 support still all the way down to 123 for Meta. Uh, talking about Netflix, my fair value is going to be sitting roughly in the low 140s for, for Meta, of course, uh, for Netflix, excuse me. So next support down to $205. So this right here is what we're really watching as a support for Netflix and resistance all the way up to $250 per share for this company. So Again, being really patient here, they are going to be starting an ad-supported tier, which I think can drive the company's revenue, re-accelerate growth once again. We'll pay attention to that as well. We'll do some fundamental analysis in the future for that company um, and what that looks like for Netflix. But support level right now, 205, all the way around to 160s for Netflix. Talking about Google, and Google here also selling off quite a bit, down a little bit over 2.6%, uh, coming down to now under $100 once again. And for Google, my fair value is, as you guys already all know, all of us, $92.65, we're starting at $99.50, so it only needs to drop another 7%, closer to 7% in order for it to make sense. Again, there's a margin of safety built in, so if you kind of remove that margin of safety, these companies are pretty much trading at fair value right now, both AMD and Google. So uh, again, Google, very, very attractive at these levels. Uh, $90 is going to be that very important support, so call it 92 fair value, $9 technical support, and 99 is where we're trading. So resistance 105, support at 90, fair value at 92. Talking about Microsoft here, and Microsoft had a really brutal day, down over 5%. I think this was one of the reasons why the markets were down so much is because two of the largest cap stocks, Microsoft and Apple, selling off as aggressively as they did. Like Apple down almost 4%, Microsoft down over 5%. So that's a pretty big sell-off. And for Microsoft, again, you guys know where I'm sitting with my fair value, sitting roughly at around low 200s, $201.52. Uh, that means it needs to come down another 14%. You know, in order for it for this to start making sense, uh, so low 200 is what I'm really paying attention to. 226, 227, that's the initial support, that's the near term support, all the way down to low 200, which is going to be all the way down over here uh, for for Microsoft. And again, I I know, like you know, I've I've dealt with all the the criticism from the past few months and few weeks, considering that all these fair values were so low. Like, just think about it, right? Apple at one point was trading at 175. Like, Amazon was at one point trading at 140. Tesla at one point was actually trading, geez, like Tesla was at like, what, 
300 plus 315 right so 315 um yeah 315 and then you got google at one point trading at 125 right nvidia at one point was actually trading at 200 plus right it was trading at almost like 195 right so 200 almost so i mean a lot of these stocks had to fall 50 percent 30 percent right which it seemed impossible just a few months ago right so yeah i mean these fair values didn't make sense back then absolutely did they didn't but look what happened in the last couple couple weeks here a couple months like they, they started to seem a lot more they started to make a lot more a lot more sense right another 10 percent, another 16 percent yeah of course i mean you ask anybody right now can apple not fall another 16 percent can Tesla not drop another 30% from these levels? Like considering everything we know from a more macroeconomic standpoint? Ask yourself this honest question, right? And, and you tell me, like these these fair values are there for a reason, right? So as, as, as less probable or less likely as it seems, it's still a possibility, right? So, and, and again, the bottom line is that this is, this is for a reason because we, we look at them as very attractive quality assets coming down to very attractive quality prices okay i wouldn't be talking about these stocks if i didn't believe that these were quality companies to hold for the long term okay and they're coming down to some very very attractive levels they're de-risking significantly right now we just got to be a little bit more patient and allow for the prices to come to us so that's exactly why i'm sharing a very quick spreadsheet with you guys in this video so that you can actually have a framework and, and have some risk reward so you know framework come go on and uh, again, this is going to be available for all of our members and in a lot more detail, we'll talk about that, what the assumptions are that kind of went into that fair value. They will get re revisited. I mean, we'll, we'll kind of readjust them as the companies report their earnings and we see some guidances. But uh, for now, that's where we are. And then finally, for Shopify, down over 9.5% of selling off. And this is still the downtrending channel, lower highs and lower lows within which we're kind of trading at right now for Shopify. So I um, hope you guys enjoyed this video and have a great weekend. Make sure that you drop a like, subscribe if you're new and Patreon Discord link is going to be down below. Again, don't forget Sunday is the last day to kind of take advantage of that 16% discount that's still available for some of our members. If you want to be a part of our Discord, get access to our buy and sell alerts, options alerts, trade ideas and the courses are also going to be on 40% discount sale if you want to take advantage of that as well. As always, happy investing and I'll see you guys in the next video.